Run, run, river, run. Carry canoes and first peoples, fur traders, and explorers. Long before the mill appeared, the Korean Ojibwe knew the river. They named it Kapiskasing because of its curve. Then they guided white people on their land. It is, however, Kimberly Clark who initiated the model town of the north when the company decided to build a mill. Le gouvernement de l'Ontario voulait que dans le nord, on exploite les richesses naturelles à partir de villes belles. Pour Kapuskasing, il a dessiné un plan. Spruce Falls serait responsable de sa réalisation. À partir de 1921, on a entrepris l'aménagement de la ville jardin avec d'élégants bâtiments publics et de belles rues bordées de verdure. Puis la ville s'est étalée. The government of Ontario doesn't want it to become another northern Ontario boomtown. Quelques commerces apparaissent dans le cercle et des premières églises s'élèvent. L'entrée en scène du New York Times accélère le développement. Il faudra une plus grande usine, un plus gros barrage, plus de maisons. À la fin des années 20, on reconnaît la silhouette de la ville. The community gymnasium is popular and the hockey games draw large crowds. In the 1930s, Bruce Falls adds tennis courts to Riverside Park and builds in front of the mill a first indoor arena with a skating rink and two curling rinks. Everybody is busy, but the paper mill is hit by a Great Depression, a global economic crisis. La construction de maisons s'essouffle. Toutefois, une première école secondaire à quatre classes est ouverte. La relance économique se confirme avec un programme fédéral de construction et la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. Le nouvel aéroport devient la base d'un escadron de l'Aviation royale du Canada et l'armée américaine installe des radars de surveillance à Kapuskasing. Let the economy roll. Spruce Falls launches its spruce planting program and begins producing consumer products such as tissues and napkins. La vie commerciale va bien. En 42, Kapuskasing compte 9 hôtels, 7 épiceries, 5 cafés, 5 salles de billard, 4 garages avec poste d'essence et 4 magasins de vêtements. Les citoyens fondent même une credit union et une caisse populaire. During the decade, many organizations are born. The Lions, the Kinsmen, they feed Isabel, joining groups such as the Legion and the Chevalier de Cologne. Il y a beaucoup de sportifs, et ils sont bien traités. Ils profitent du terrain de baseball et de la piscine extérieure. L'aréna, qui avait jusqu'ici de la glace naturelle, est reconstruit avec de la glace artificielle et quatre pistes de curling. For some years now, the town has opened a lot of parcels, and it keeps growing. Northfield appears, and even site spreads eastward to the Eastview neighborhood. Nearly 450 new lots are opened. In these residential areas, churches are built. Les nouvelles écoles St. Patrick et Eastview, Jacques Cartier et Jeanne Mance accueillent leurs premiers élèves. La possibilité d'une fusion municipale fait parler. The 60s, the good years. From a commercial standpoint, things are booming. The Chamber of Commerce and the Nato Mall appear in 62-63. The circle is beautiful. Its sidewalks are now paved, and in the center, a fountain takes place. Kapuskasing subit plein de transformations, en particulier en 1967, année du centenaire de la Confédération du Canada. Le terrain de balle Eastview, déjà populaire auprès des amateurs de baseball, devient un grand complexe sportif, avec des terrains de football et de lacrosse, des courts de tennis et de volleyball. La plage du parc Centennial au lac Claire devient un important lieu de rencontre l'été. Tout ça grâce au généreux don de l'oncle Spruce. Many clubs and organizations already exist in Kapuskasing. In the 1970s, they multiplied. Kapuskasing is now in full recreation mode. From 1967 to 1983, volunteers from many organizations the Snow Rover Snowwheel Club, the Centre Régional de Loisirs Culturels, the Capuscasing Festival of Music. On construit les quartiers Centennial et Centennial Heights et les subdivisions Fortin et Thibault. Et il y a un tout nouveau palais des sports. Capuscasing franchit une étape importante. Avant, pour faire des études secondaires, les élèves devaient aller à l'école de langue anglaise ou dans un établissement privé comme l'Académie d'Youville. En 71, un nouveau chapitre commence. L'école secondaire Cité des Jeunes ouvre ses portes et KDHS construit une piscine intérieure. À ce moment-là, il y a plus de 2000 élèves au secondaire à Kapuskasing. The mill is already 60 years old. Newsprint production processes have changed. At the end of 1970, a major modernization program is announced. Some machines are shut down while others start to produce paper from recycled newspapers. The mill is going through changes. 
And so is the town. Campus Gasing officially becomes a bilingual town. A new Sensenbrenner Hospital opens to better meet the long-term needs of the community. Many organizations are springing up, such as the Children's Aid. The Indian Friendship Center is also created. Après 70 ans d'activité, Kimberly Clark annonce qu'elle veut vendre l'usine Spruce Falls Power and Paper. Après les rassemblements et les manifestations, les employés, les résidents de Capus Casing et Tembec rachètent les installations et préparent un plan de modernisation. 1994 est une année électorale. Un jeune homme dans la fin vingtaine se fait approcher pour débuter sa carrière en politique par celui qui sera élu maire la même année, Pierre Perra. At the time, I was the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Members of the Chamber were trying to put together a slate of people to run for municipal council. While I was out of town, I got approached by Pierre Perra, who was running for mayor at that time, and Eric Gagnon. They called me when I was out of town in Toronto. And they said, Dave, you know, you have until Friday to put your name in. And actually, I hadn't really even considered running at that time. And they said, we think you're a best fit. We'd like to see you run. And I actually had to go see JP to certify that, that I was who I was uh, out of town, find someone who would notarize my intentions to run for council at that time. I got my nomination papers in and uh, the rest is history. J'étais avocat à Toronto. On songeait à revenir à Capsicasing pour élever notre famille à Capsicasing, qui était notre ville natale. J'avais un intérêt dans la politique, alors c'était un facteur qui m'a motivé à revenir. J'ai pensé que je ferais peut-être de la politique municipale pour éventuellement faire de la politique provinciale. Mais j'ai rapidement conclu que la politique, c'était pas pour moi. On avait très bon conseil, qui était très fonctionnel, et puis j'en garde beaucoup de souvenirs. Pierre Perra, he was new. Really, really smart guy. Um, a lot of fun to uh, work with. It was a good introduction to politics. Il n'y a pas de doute, je me suis présenté quand j'étais trop jeune, je n'avais pas d'expérience. C'était un, euh, un poste qui était très exigeant. La gouvernance municipale est difficile. J'ai gagné beaucoup de respect là, pour les conseillers et les maires. Pierre, c'était un homme très intelligent. Très, très intelligent. Et puis moi, j'aimais ça travailler avec parce qu'il était, comme on dit, fair avec tout le monde. C'était très bon. Hein? It was a busy term. So if you didn't know what challenge was before, you know what challenge is now. Comme tous les conseils, on avait plusieurs gros défis. Dans l'ère de mon conseil, c'était le, le gouvernement Mike Harris là, qui mettait en vigueur sa révolution du bon sens. Puis une grosse partie de son approche, lui, c'était de transférer aux municipalités des charges qui étaient provinciales. Alors, on voulait que les municipalités en assument la responsabilité sans nécessairement transférer les deniers aux municipalités pour leur permettre d'opérer ces services-là. The government of the day thought that amalgamation was something that was worthwhile doing. They thought that, you know, there was far too many small municipalities and a larger government could serve the public better and it would be an easier thing for them to fund. So, it, it was encouraged that the municipality look at an amalgamation. And that that's where they were taking us, down that road. And uh, I know that it caused a lot of problems for the neighboring municipalities as well as ours. La menace du gouvernement à l'époque, c'était si on ne réussissait pas à sauver des coûts dans les régions, les transferts euh, aux municipalités seraient réduits. Alors, ce n'est pas qu'un dossier facile. Ça, c'était des dossiers euh, très émotionnels qui étaient voués à l'échec, qu'on aurait préféré ne pas avoir à entretenir. It didn't really promote the environment that you'd like to see amongst the neighboring municipalities. They saw us as trying to take over their councils, their town. That was a real challenging part for us as well, is getting through that. Eventually, the province pulled away from that. There's some municipalities that went through the amalgamation. I think Temiskaming Shores is one. So uh, that was one of the challenges during our first term. And at that time, it was a three-year term. So it was a real busy three years. The municipalities, uh, the relation with the government provincial is serré, but quand même ardu. In the same sense, le gouvernement fédéral nous a annoncé qu'elle allait fermer l'aéroport de Capsicasing. Alors, c'est une autre instance où Capsicasing a dû assumer une responsabilité qui était autrefois là, assumée par un autre palier du gouvernement. Alors, euh, on a eu des discussions avec municipalité, avec euh, le gouvernement fédéral et euh, l'aéroport a été transféré à la ville de Capsicasing. On a eu un autre dossier qui était assez euh, épineux. Ce n'est pas nécessairement un dossier municipal, mais c'est un dossier qui impliquait la communauté. C'était euh, l'offre par Tembec d'acheter le 50% des actions que les gens de la communauté, surtout les employés de Spruce Falls, appartenaient. Il y avait des pour, il y avait des contre. Ça a généré beaucoup de débats. Malheureusement, j'ai été plongé dans ce débat-là. Durant mon temps, on a mis de l'emphase sur l'aspect récréatif. Je croyais être un membre. Ça faisait partie de ma campagne. On a engagé un directeur des loisirs. On a refait toutes les chambres d'âles avec une contribution généreuse de Tembec. On a entrepris une rénovation assez substantielle du cercle, du côté esthétique. Je me souviens qu'il y avait l'emblème de Capsicasing qui était dans le cercle à ce moment donné, là, qui a été remplacé par la fontaine. On a pris l'emblème, puis on l'a entreposé là, à la municipalité. Puis il y a des gens qui se plaignaient qu'on 
on venait d'annuler une partie de l'histoire de la Capuscasing. Mais je pense que le projet de l'amélioration du cercle était en général très bien vu. Ça, ça a rehaussé là, la qualité esthétique là, de la ville de Capuscasing et puis, et puis du cercle. En 96, la ville a célébré son 75e anniversaire. J'étais maire à l'époque, alors j'ai des très bons souvenirs là, de, de toutes les activités qu'il y a eu à cette époque-là. C'était une année de célébration. J'ai des très bons souvenirs là, de notre 75e anniversaire. Puis durant mon terme aussi, la Cité des jeunes a célébré son 25e anniversaire. Alors ça aussi, là, ça générait beaucoup de retrouvailles auprès des gens de ce Les années 1990 sont une période très dynamique aussi pour la francophonie. Deux médias apparaissent, la radio communautaire CKGN et les journaux L'Horizon Weekender. Le Collège Boréal et l'Université de Hearst s'installent en permanence. D'autres idées naissent, celles d'un festival de la Saint-Jean et d'un centre de santé communautaire. During my first term of council, the chair of finance at that time was councillor J.C. Carl. He served on one term on council and then ran for mayor. JC was in business, uh, he had his own business here, Campbell's Wholesale. He was a real strong person on council. He definitely carried his opinion and he had a stern voice on council. Great guy to have as uh, chair of finance. It was seen by him that paying down debt was the way to go. And of course, council agreed. And we continued along those lines. The plus gros défi de le, quand j'étais maire, c'est de faire ce qu'on ne pensait pas plus qu'on pouvait. C'est d'essayer de ménager, de contrôler et puis bien faire nos dépenses. The municipality was in debt. They had a large debt. I think at the time it was $9 million. That is a lot of money today, but it was a lot of money then especially. It really didn't permit us to do a lot of the infrastructure work that was required. We spent most of our budget paying down debt. And so it really didn't permit us to borrow anymore because the municipality couldn't continue in the, going in the way that they were going. And that continued for probably oh, three terms. So we really had to buckle down and make sure that our debt got paid down so that we were able to finally continue to do the, the work that needed to be done with the municipality. Otherwise, you just couldn't move forward. The millennium begins with industrial diversification. Thanks to Agrium, Campus Casing becomes the site of the only phosphate mine in Canada. Ça, c'est un grand plaisir parce qu'Agrium nous avait raconté au conseil avant de faire la décision. Puis on a fait tout ce qu'on pouvait pour leur aider, faire sûr que ça nous donnerait des emplois d'extra pour le monde de Capus Casing. On est venu à un arrangement qui sera bon pour Cap et bon pour les autres. On inaugure un tout nouveau complexe sportif. L'expansion du euh, palais des sports, c'était quelque chose qui me touchait beaucoup parce que ma femme était dans le Broomba, puis moi j'étais entraîneur dans le hockey, je jouais au hockey. C'est une place qu'on était souvent, ça fait qu'on savait ce qui étaient les problèmes, qu'est-ce qu'il fallait résoudre pour que ça aille bien. The Lumberjack Heritage Festival and the Saint-Jean are the new summer rendezvous. Certainly, um, it's nice when you see your community spirit. If I was to single out one event in our community, I would have to say it was the annual event started by my predecessor, Mayor Jesse Caron, the Lumberjack Festival. It was such a good opportunity to see the community come together. Often it was a reason for a family reunion. People would come back to visit. And when you're walking through the community, walking through Riverside Park, and you saw families having fun, it really warms you and it gives you a really good sense of what your community is about. We had hundreds of volunteers every year that came back and made that festival a success. So that was something I was always very happy to participate in. Qu'est-ce qu'on voulait? On voulait donner quelque chose au peuple, des souvenirs. Puis le festival du Bicharon, ça a été euh, un super. Pour remercier tous les volontaires qui ont travaillé là-dedans parce qu'ils n'ont mis les heures. Tous les événements de Bûcheron, il y avait du monde bien plus que je pensais que t'as pas d'avoir. On a fait des événements pour que la parenté du monde qui est le petit, ils ont une raison de venir à Cap visiter. Un beau tour, mais ça c'est euh, M. Villeneuve, Jerry, qui a organisé ça. C'est pas quelque chose que tu vas voir tout partout. De monter en bateau sur la rivière, puis euh, arrêter au bout, puis ça revenir. C'est une belle excursion. Alors ça, c'est un bateau qui t'a couvert, fait que si il y avait de la pluie, non, t'as quoi, c'était bon. Et puis, il servait de la boisson, puis un peu de manger sur le bateau, tu fait que c'était plaisant pour tout le monde. Pour ça, quand t'as pas à avoir plus de monde, ben, c'est réellement, quand après tu l'as pensé, une fois qu'ils ont monté, ils ont descendu, ils ont tout vu, fait qu'ils ne sont pas encouragés pour venir une deuxième fois. Le projet du parc d'eau dans le parc, c'est quelque chose que j'avais vu dans une autre ville. Puis il y avait tellement d'enfants dans le parc, il dit ça, c'est quelque chose de bon pour quand? C'est vrai qu'on a appliqué des octrois pour le, le faire. On a eu les octrois, tout ça, puis les, les enfants aiment bien vraiment ça. Plusieurs sculptures sont installées pour rendre hommage au patrimoine local. Le triptyque sur les murs extérieurs de Cap Furniture près du cercle, passage à travers le temps devant la gare, le tableau dans le parc, toutes des œuvres de Normand Fortin. Par contre, Capus qui signe par un monument.
le Capus Casing Inn. À l'époque, euh, au service d'incendie de Capus Casing, on avait le service de 9 à 1. C'est nous qui répondions pour tous les appels de, de la région, pour ambulance, police ou pompiers. Et ce matin-là, environ 2h30 du matin, je reçois un appel qui avait un incendie qui se déroulait à la capine. C'était la troisième fois dans mon corps de travail, dans l'année précédente, que j'avais un appel pour la capine. Les jeunes rentraient dans la capine le soir, faisaient un petit party d'une chambre, mettaient le feu au matelas, au tapis. On avait un appel qu'on avait un feu à in. On arrivait à la chambre, on était dans le feu, on sortait le matelas dehors. C'était quasiment une routine. Fait que ce matin-là, quand le téléphone est rentré qu'on avait un feu à in, j'ai tout de suite pensé que c'était encore un feu d'une chambre. Que... On va être là une heure, puis ça va être détendu. On est parti, moi et mon partenaire, dans ce temps-là, qui était Luc Génier. Puis on est viré de la bing sur Riverside pour s'en mettre en direction de la Caps Casing Inn. Les flammes dépassaient la couverture, je dirais, d'une trentaine de pieds. C'est là que j'ai regardé mon partenaire dans le camion. Je lui ai dit à Luc, le matin, on a besoin de l'aide, on fait pas ça tout seul. C'est là qu'on a déployé les pompiers de Valreta, Moonbeam et de Fouquet avec de l'équipement et des hommes pour venir nous aider à combattre les flammes en espérant que le feu se propage pas dans le restant de la ville parce que c'était assez sérieux. Là. Ce qui rendait la situation plus difficile, c'était au troisième étage. Il n'y avait pas aucune manière qu'on pouvait rentrer dans l'édifice. L'édifice avait été abandonné un an auparavant ou deux ans auparavant. Il faut battre le feu de l'extérieur. On n'avait pas toutes les ressources qu'on a aujourd'hui. Ça. Ah oui, ce camion-là, dans ce temps-là, ça aurait été complètement différent. En dedans d'une heure, la couverture était enflammée d'un bout à l'autre de, de l'édifice. La bâtisse avait été bâtie dans les années 20, fait que la structure était sec autant qu'elle pouvait être. Quand le feu a pris là, c'était une partie perdue en commençant. Il n'y avait aucune manière de, de sauver cet édifice-là des flammes. Ça a pris beaucoup d'eau. Euh, je dirais qu'aux environ 10 heures le matin, il n'y avait plus d'eau. La tank de réserve de la ville était complètement vide. On avait de l'eau qu'on pompait de la rivière avec des pompes à gaz portatifs. C'est le seul moyen qu'on avait en attendant qu'ils réplénissent la tank d'eau de la ville. Au total, je pense qu'on était 27 heures sur scène à combattre les flammes. C'était du sport, comme on dit. Je suis du pompier depuis 2005, puis j'avais deux ans d'expérience quand ce feu-là est arrivé. C'était en 2007. Là, aujourd'hui, c'est encore le plus gros feu qu'on a jamais eu dans ma carrière ici à Capsquissi. Not long after I came into office, uh, we had a major forest fire that was threatening the community. And I believe for the first time in the history of Capuscasing, we had to do an evacuation. So we evacuated the southern part of the community. That forest fire was threatening both the natural gas pumping station and immediately next to that, the entire wood supply for the mill. Certainly was a challenging time for us. It was a great to see the way the community pulled together. I remember over one year, and it was very early in my first mandate, it was just after the forest fire, the Capus Casing Inn burned. And then not long after that, Dante's Restaurant burned. And not long after that, a major business on the circle, Doral's Specialty Shop, or that building where Doral's was burned. It was a little bit of a psychological blow to the community. You know, the Capus Casing is very resilient. So we moved on. And of course, we have a very nice police station now where the Capus Casing Inn was. And our circle is still the center of town. It's a vibrant part of our community. Au départ, Capus Casing ne devait pas être une ville de compagnie. À l'approche de son centenaire, on multiplie des efforts pour diversifier l'économie locale. I think any mayor in Northern Ontario always wants to ensure the economic viability of their community. And certainly, uh, we were going through a time in our economy where the mill was facing some challenges. And I thought it was important that we try and both diversify our existing economy and stabilize our current major employer, which was the mill. It certainly was a challenge when the Agrium mine closed. We knew that they had a fixed lifespan of 10 years, and we knew that day was coming, but they still employed 300 people. And when that mine closure was looming, certainly there was an obligation by us as a community and mayor and council to mitigate the effects of that. Up until that time, we were a forestry town. You worked in the mill or you worked in the bush, and that was pretty much it. When the mine came along, we developed a whole new skill set. So now we had 300 miners living in Capus Casing who could be out of a job very soon. So certainly that was a challenge and I was very fortunate to arrange a meeting with the president of uh, Detour Gold, Gérald Pennington. And uh, through that conversation we started, he ended up meeting with Agrium, said, I want those miners. I'm opening a mine near Cochrane and I need those miners. So it was a, a success story in the end, but certainly there was some stress there as that process was working itself out. And then I think another challenge at a much higher level, Northern Ontario level, but it affected Capus Casing a lot and all our neighboring communities, was the last provincial government was very close to the environmental movement. One of the priorities of the environmental movement was to 
curtail or stop forestry. So we constantly have that campaign in Toronto at Queen's Park to protect our forestry industry, to protect our jobs, and in fact, try and stabilize it and make it grow a bit. So that was something that occurred throughout my time as mayor and as president of the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities. What ended up being our most effective strategy was when we were able to communicate to the provincial government that the biggest asset, the biggest tool in your toolbox against climate change is the boreal forest. And trees in the boreal forest absorb carbon through their adult life. And then when they come to the end of their life, that's when they have the most value to the forestry sector. And if they are harvested, all that carbon that they've stored over their years is stored forever. If it burns or if it dies and falls down, that carbon goes back into the atmosphere. So forestry is a healthy process. It's a long-term farming type of business, and it's a big benefit to the environment. So you harvest those trees, you replant, and when they mature, you harvest them again. And it's an ongoing process that's very good for the environment. And once we were able to communicate that to the provincial government, they took a considerably different view to the forestry sector. Le gouvernement fédéral annonce qu'il fermera les portes de sa ferme de recherche de Capus Casing à quelques mois de son centième anniversaire. La ville de Capus Casing, par l'entremise de sa société de développement économique, rachète la propriété pour assurer la relance de cette véritable institution locale. Capus Casing a few legacies. And one of the most important ones, aside from the mill, is the experimental farm, which was actually here before the mill was here. And it was a major research center, especially when it came to knowing how to farm uh, scientifically and properly in, in northern Ontario. So when the federal government announced that they were closing that facility, uh, I knew we had to do something as a community. And it was certainly some intense negotiations to be able to purchase that from the federal government. And we had a vision with the guidance of some of the agricultural groups in the province of growing that sector in our community. We uh, had a strategy in place. We went down that road. And I think the farm is in a good place now. It certainly is very active. They're growing the operation. And I think it's a poster child of what uh, agriculture could be in Northern Ontario. Celebrating 100 years is an opportunity to highlight the settlers' work and recognize the spaces that have animated our community, our parishes and our schools, our organizations and our businesses, but above all, our people, which made Campus Casing a town where we love to live. Of the thousands of volunteers Campus Casing has known, Nearly 150 have served on town council, including eight women. Some stayed for a few months, others for decades. As you know, I was the youngest councillor ever elected to the town of Capscasing, and I probably remain now the longest standing elected official to the town of Capscasing. But the fact that I started so young meant that I had a lot of time to give, and I have absolutely no problem in helping people. That's what I enjoy the most. I probably enjoy that more than working at my regular job, so it fits well. I don't think running for council or running for mayor are any different. Uh, they're just different positions, different roles that you play on council. People don't give enough credit to councils. I think, quite honestly, that's probably the most important role as a councillor. The head of council leads them through their term, but the role of a councillor is a huge role. People don't see it for what it really is. The councillors really control the direction of council. If you don't have a good council, it doesn't matter who the mayor is, you won't have a good four years. It's important to have a good mayor at a council to help you steer the ship, but it's the workers on the ship to make the difference. I've been really fortunate uh, this term that I have six councillors that want to work. And I think the residents of Caps Casing did a good job in the selection of councillors. And I think that's an important part of having an effective council. So, like I said, my first term as mayor, it's been a real, real fun time to even considering the, the situations that, that we're facing with COVID, which is a unique situation for all the mayors and councils throughout the, the area or throughout Canada and the world. Even through that, it's, it's been one that uh, I felt uh, our council has worked well through. And again, with the losing of my daughter at the first term, uh, council stepped up and, and allowed me to do what I had to do. And that's, that's huge. When we talk about the one common problem that all councils have, and we've had since for the last 25, if not longer, probably 30 years, is, is youth out migration. Youth out migration is twofold. You need jobs to keep the youth here. The common thing that you'd hear is, why would I want to stay here? There's nothing for me here. There's no jobs for me here. That comes from the parents and the community that raises them. They have to want to come back. 
throughout my term on council, the one thing I wanted to do is make sure that when kids left here, they said, wow, I got to get back there. We have to leave them with a, a desire to come back. And if they don't leave with a desire to come back, they'll never want to come back. Your role during that time is non-existent. Throughout council, that's what I've tried to do, is ensure that there was always something enjoyable in our community. There was something that kids would want to come back to. Change the opinion of young people. You get it from people, newcomers to CAP. You come to CAP, you say, gee, you know, it's the people here. It's what you see. It's the environment. It's the community spirit. Whatever we have, we take it for granted. It's on us now to instill it in our kids and make sure that our kids want to come back. And I've used my family as an example. So the fact my son wants to come back and be a lawyer here, the fact that my daughter would want to come back and be a nurse. I think that Northern Ontario is a future for Ontario for sure. The vision is open for us to plan something that every municipality in Northern Ontario is seeing, is seeing an influx of people who want to move north. It's sped up. It's something that we, you know, if you'd asked me that last year, whether or not it would happen in that fast, anybody would have said no. The fact that housing is hard to acquire in CAP, there's so many people that are flocking north to live. I think here's where the opportunities lie. I see Capscasing as a vibrant community. We really have an open canvas to paint the future for Capscasing. People are recognizing the quality of life that's available in Capscasing. We're seeing an influx of people into Capscasing from Southern Ontario. We have young people that are staying. We have young people that are coming back. And we have former seniors that used to live here coming back. We have a lot of opportunity, whether it's in the forestry sector, agriculture, mining, power production, or still in the mill with the diversification of the products that they make there. I'm very proud of the fact that my children and my grandchildren are here in Capuscasing and have viable livelihoods. That's the future for Capuscasing. Things are looking very good. I think the future of Capuscasing is assured. I think there will be other developments in the region, whether it be mining or other. And people see a beautiful future for the city of Capuscasing. Avec l'oncle Spruce et des citoyens engagés, le conseil et la communauté a veillé au bien-être des siens. In 100 years, very different eras remind us of how rich and fascinating our local history is. And if we take the time, it is still all ours to see and appreciate. All of ours to see and love. I remember meetings where I didn't have a babysitter. And so the kids, I, I would open up the auditorium and allow them to rollerblade through the auditorium. L'ancien maire de Capucasing, c'était Piché, comme tu sais. Piché appartenait au journal The Northern Times. Puis Piché écrivait contre moi là, à, chaque, à chaque semaine, à, à n'en plus finir. Là. <laughs> fait que euh, moi, ce que j'ai fait pour contrecarrer ça, j'avais euh, une heure à la radio uh, au lendemain du conseil avec Mark Jones. The big amphitheater on the highway. We just had that in town. Tu sais, si on avait mis ça, c'est un gros, uh, un gros barge flottant. Tu sais, direct, direct au centre de la rivière, me semble. Tu sais, uh, ça a été beau, ça, mais you can't go back now, right? Through my position, I got to travel all around Ontario and in some cases across Canada. I was able to represent Northern Ontario on a trade mission to China. Uh, and certainly you, you establish friendships and relationships and a network. Uh, and then all of a sudden that ends officially when you leave office. But I've continued to maintain those connections in a lot of cases. So that would be probably the one thing that I miss the most. Really, I could say that Al uh, uh, worked really hard to, to um, put Capscasing on the map. He was very um, a vibrant mayor. He was uh, outgoing and... Uh, you know, when he when he walked into a room, people recognized him. He had succeeded to an aspect much more economic for the city of Capuchin. So I think his contribution to him was very important. I think it's been 27 years since I've been a councillor. 
depuis tout ce temps-là, je pense à la première fois, dans, dans le terme de mer, comme le, mon premier terme, qu'on voit que le, le, le conseil ou les euh, euh, le business euh, du conseil se fait d'un deux langues. Euh, C'est-à-dire que tout autour de la table, on a différents caractères, différentes personnes qui, qui parlent les deux langues. Our family has a lot of history in this community. So my father and my grandparents came here in 1925. And uh, we, he opened, my father opened a family business in 1940. So it's still in business on the circle over 80 years uh, this year. He was also a member of municipal council in the early 60s uh, when the amalgamation of uh, Valabert and Brunetteville uh, happened and they joined Capus Casing. Uh, and as I stated earlier, you know, everything that our family has, everything I work for is in this community. So I hope through the teamwork with council that we've made Capus Casing a little bit better and we've continued to make it a great place to live and raise your family. I'm extremely proud to have represented Capus Casing. It was a real privilege. And something that I cherished the whole time I was in office. Le monde de Cap, ils tiennent à leur ville. Les personnes qui sont skating sont sont du monde qui sont chaleureux, du monde qui veulent aider.